it's Castlin here. From the scariest landing spots in the world to the most unusual, here are eight airports you won't believe exist. Number eight, Princess Juliana International Airport. Another island that has found the space needed to give their airport to present difficulties is St. Martin in the Caribbean. The island is actually split into two, with one half being French territory and the other belonging to the Netherlands. The main airport is located on the Dutch side and named after the Crown Princess Juliana of the Netherlands, who made a visit to the island in 1944, shortly after the airport was constructed. At first you think this airport was no different than the others you'd find in the Caribbean, but the thing that makes this one stand out is what you'd find at the end of the runway. A beautiful white sandy beach called Maho Beach. It's definitely a popular spot with tourists and plane aficionados. The proximity of the runway to the beach makes it one of the few places in the world where you can view planes in flight just beyond the end of the runway. In fact, it is so close that it is quite possible for a person to be blown off the beach and into the water by the blast. These are rapid air movements produced by the aircraft, which often fly over at altitudes of less than 100 feet. OMG. Being such an unusual setup, the bars and restaurants on the beach actually display flight details for customers, so they know exactly when the next plane will be making its arrival. Warning signs are also posted to remind visitors of the potential risks that can be involved when viewing planes so closely. Sadly, now the days of the Boeing 747's landing here are over, as the last one arrived on the island in late 2016. Luckily though, smaller Airbuses now make the trip with similarly stunning results. Number 7. Scotland's Barra Airport Of all the features you commonly see at airports, Sturdy concrete runway would be one that you think was essential, right? But that's exactly what Barra's airport doesn't have. Instead, being the only place in the world that regularly schedules flights to land on runways that are marked out by wooden posts on sandy beaches. It's true. An island in the Outer Hebrides is the main airport of Barra, which lies to the northwest of mainland Scotland. First opened in 1936, it is one of the busiest airports to serve the Scottish Islands and Highlands. As you would expect, only smaller planes fly to this airport, with the Canadian company Viking Air Limited serving the main route with their 19-seater aircraft between Barra and Glasgow. There's good reason for this, though. The areas set aside for the runways are completely submerged during high tides, so flights must be planned accordingly. The beaches are also popular with cockle pickers, who rely on the wind socks to determine whether the airport is open or not. In a 2011 poll of pilots and travelers, the picturesque scenery won the airport the award for the most scenic in the world and is regularly featured on lists of the most stunning arrivals. The real fun here happens during night flights, which are thankfully rare because the runways are only illuminated by vehicle lights and temporary reflective surfaces. Number six, Matacane Airstrip. Lesotho is a small country in the mountains that is completely encircled by South Africa. It is the only independent state in the world where every part of the land is at an elevation of at least 3,281 feet. The country does have airports in its main cities, but it uses a network of small landing strips that the Lesotho Flying Doctor Service and charity organizations to reach the more remote villages and to run health clinics and provide help. One of these, the Matacane Airstrip, is simply breathtaking and is often referred to as one of the scariest landing spots in the world. At an altitude of over 7,000 feet and a length of less than 1,312 feet, this runway ends with a 2,000 foot cliff face. The strip can only be used by small single engine aircrafts but what really makes it tricky is the unpredictable mountain weather. While it's relatively simple to land here, it's the takeoff that really makes your hair stand up. Depending on prevailing winds, it is quite possible that the plane won't have generated enough lift by the time you reach the end of the runway, which leads you to fall off the edge of the cliff, down towards the Oobing River, and hopefully start flying by the time you reach the bottom. Good luck. Number five, 
Narsiswak Airport. Surrounded by snowy mountains and icy lakes, Narsiswak Airport is the only international airport in southern Greenland. Serving a small town, it is mainly used as a hub where passengers can then transfer by helicopters to the remainder of their journeys. Originally constructed in 1994 by the American War Department, aka Department of Defense, over 4,000 people were stationed during the war in effort to support flights of the B-25 Mitchell bombers and the PBY Catalina flying boats. Here, they helped escort Allied convoys and track German submarines. After the war finished, a U.S. presence was maintained until 1958 when they decided to close the airbase since it was no longer of strategic significance. Since then, local airliners have used the airport and Greenland's airport administration eventually took over in 1988. In recent years, the airport has seen a decline in use and with plans for bigger facilities elsewhere in the country. I mean, it won't be long until Narsarswak is forced to close for good. Number four, Camp Barneo. Ice and snow are treacherous conditions for planes, and the temporary runway at Camp Barneo is itself carved from ice providing one of the most unusual and spectacular landing sites anywhere on Earth. Based in the North Pole, Camp Barneo is a Russian ice base that provides scientific and tourist access to the area. Because it is on a constantly moving ice flow, it has to be rebuilt from scratch every April and in a slightly different location with risks ranging from anything from thin ice to large vehicles, extreme cold, and even polar bears, you definitely need to keep your wits about you while visiting Barneo. Otherwise, I mean, it's the best way to visit the North Pole and the excitement of the airport is all part of the experience. In order to build the runway at the beginning of the season, a team of engineers must first find a suitable ice flow to set up camp. With basic equipment, they are parachuted down to begin construction on the ice. And when possible, the first plane lands with further equipment to finish it off. The runway must have a consistent maintenance and observation due to the risks of cracking. Not just because of the moving surface, but from the damage that is caused every time an aircraft lands. In 2016, operations were delayed when the first flight of the season, a large AN-74 aircraft, cracked the strip and prevented anything else from landing there until the holes had been filled with water and given time to freeze. With the rapidly declining ice sheets as a result of climate change, these difficulties are becoming much more common. Some experts suggest this yearly event won't be possible for much longer due to increasing dangers. Hashtag global warming. Number three, Funchal Airport in Madeira. When designing an airport, architects face a series of challenges depending on the location, climate, and terrain. But what do you do if there's not enough space on an island to build a runway suitable enough for planes? Well, that's the problem they had on the Portuguese island of Madeira, which lies to the west of Morocco and about 250 miles to the north of the Canary Islands. Because this area is literally in the middle of nowhere, the airport was definitely needed. And the solution they came up with makes this runway at Funchal one of the most unusual, unique, and scary in the world. Having started with a short runway, several extensions were needed over the years to allow modern airlines to use the airport. The extension in 2000 doubled the length of the runway to just a little over a mile long. In order for this to be possible, they had to build a runway on a platform that reached out into the ocean and is held up on a series of about 180 columns that each are approximately 230 feet tall. Whoa. The particular engineering challenge with this was designing columns in a way that they could reliably endure the extreme pressures that would be put on them by the airlines and the aircrafts, obviously. If the thought of landing on a structure that is seen as one of the most complicated airport designs ever seems a little unnerving, then you probably don't want to think of the other challenges faced by flights to Funchal. Since it is a coastal airport on an island that lies in a remote location within the Atlantic Ocean, crosswinds can become quite a problem. And it is not completely unusual to see a plane having to land virtually sideways to counteract it. And if you listen close enough, I'm sure you could hear a collective sigh of relief from the passengers when they finally come to a stop. 
<sighs> Number two, Gibraltar Airport. One feature you generally expect from an airport runway is a dedicated stretch where planes can take off and land. I mean, right? In another case of space management, the International Airport of Gibraltar has one that shares usage with other forms of transportation. At the southernmost tip of Spain, Gibraltar is a small British territory that lies at the bottom of the Iberian Peninsula. It was ceded to Britain in 1713 as an important strategic position overlooking the entrance to the Mediterranean. It is only 2.6 square miles in size. For comparison, Rhode Island, which is the smallest state in America, dwarfs Gibraltar at 1,212 square miles. A hilly place that's so small has got to be economical with this land usage, and that's why the runway is bisected with four-lane Winston Churchill Avenue, the busiest road in Gibraltar, and the one that leads to Spain. This causes logistical problems, as you'd expect, with the road having to be closed every time an aircraft takes off or lands. Add this to the tricky crosswinds and mountainous surroundings, you have one of the most tricky and unusual landings you'll find anywhere. Though there is significant benefit to this setup, the airport terminal is located a mere 500 yards from the center of Gibraltar, Gibraltar, making it one of the shortest commutes to any airport in the world, and sure to keep those unexpected cab bills to a minimum. Yeah! Number one, Paro International Airport. Paro is the only international airport in Bhutan and is one that is considered so challenging that there are only a small number of pilots who are actually certified to land there. The difficulties come from the perilous location of where the runway is located, which is 1.5 miles above sea level and surrounded by sharp peaks of the Himalayan mountains. With a runway that is almost 4,000 feet in length, Paro holds the record as one of the only airport in the world whose runway is shorter than its elevation. You want to know what else is crazy? Flights to the airport are only allowed during daylight hours in clear conditions, and only under visual meteorological conditions. This means that pilots must have a clear view to land without the assistance of any instruments. And because the airport is situated in a deep valley surrounded by peaks that are as high as 18,000 feet, there are no signs of the airport on your approach route until the plane has almost landed. Passengers often report frightening experience due to the winds that channel through the valley causing extremely turbulent conditions. But if you're brave enough, it is definitely most worth the trip. The scenic mountains and views are simply breathtaking. Thanks for watching. Have you been to any of these airports? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Adios. Ciao. Auf Wiedersehen.